talk to you today about the VLB bus slots that are present on 486 class computers. Now you might find them on some of the 386 class computers, you may also find them on some Pentium class computers, but it is a VLB design that was designed to work with the 486 CPU. Um, most cases that you will find the VLB slot will be using them for a video card or for a controller card such as for hard drives and that, that would use this uh, Visa local bus slot. So the slot kind of came around in the latter end of 1992 and was around until 1994 when it was discontinued and the superior uh, PCI uh, legacy as we would call it now uh, decided to come along. So how did it come about? Well it was created by the VESA committee. This is one of these non-profit organisations that attempts to um, unify the computer industry. So it was uh, founded by the NEC Corporation and the reason why they wanted to found it was because they were selling uh, what we call monitors and stuff like that and they wanted to get better display from their computers so they had to come up with something that was faster. What was happening on these particular motherboards is that with the ISA bus it's quite slow whereas the VLB bus is clocked at the same speed as the CPU so data can be transferred over directly. The bus slot that's on these allows direct access to the memory at the speed of the processor itself. In other words the VL bus can actually move data at 32 bits at a time. These, these slots here will allow 8, with both will allow 16, but this will allow 32. So that means that more data can be sent through the bus of the actual computer, therefore information such as video, which is very intensive, is able to go back and forth quick to the actual video card processing unit and allow for fast display rates. Likes of a sound card and that wouldn't require that sort of speed, so sound cards generally stayed in the ISA slots or ISA slots well up into the uh, Pentium 2, Pentium 3 class era. Those the data to flow at the 32-bit data rate, which is the full width of the actual CPU. So a 486 CPU will be 32 bits wide, so this allows the full speed of the actual CPU that you're using to run. That's going to be a problem, I'll explain that in a minute. So the maximum throughput of the VL bus is anywhere from 128 to 132 uh, megabytes per second. In other words, these particular slots went a long way from, from removing the bottleneck that was present with the standard ISA slots 8 and 16 bit. For a 6 board which we may show in the future, you'll find there's an extra card added on here which would be a ISA card with the VLB at the end of it and they'd be used for the likes of hard drives. Now an average 16 bit uh, ATA slash ID hard drive uh, can kind of go around about 4-5 megabytes per second in and around that. Now when you start plugging into a VL bus slot you might get up to about 8 megabytes per second. Um, so this will help in real world situations because one of the other bottlenecks on the computer of these vintage is the actual data from the hard drive getting to the actual memory, to the video card, to the CPU and um, get all that memory around the board the next bottleneck you're going to have will be the actual hard drive so it will actually allow for that to uh, it will actually allow that speed to be enhanced. It's not a massive boost, but uh, it's still giving a substantial boost over the old ISIS style, regardless. The drawbacks with this particular system is its dependence on a 486 class computer and a 486 class CPU. Uh, the likes of the Pentium and that where some of these VL slots arrived, the, there was a few problems with the speed and that between the two of them. So a few little sort of hat tricks had to be done. But um, if you have a Pentium class PC CPU, you're better off using the PCI slot rather than the VLB or VL slot. So with the later Pentium machines, the VL bus doesn't really exist. You will find the old Pentium with that bus in place on the motherboard, but you'll also find it will most likely have a PCI slot. Use the PCI slot, ignore this particular setup if it's on a Pentium class computer. You're better off to uh, uh, go around that and not actually use it. You see how they came after it? In reality, these slots run at 33 megahertz. The reason being is that the actual VL bus could probably run at 40 or 50 megahertz, but anything over 33 causes system instability. So uh, most of them have been peeled back to 33 megahertz. 
and that's the same then as the standard PCI card slot that came just after. So this design is very cheap insofar as all you have to really do is get a set of connectors, set of cables everywhere, the traces on the board and have them linked straight to this and voila you get a VLB, VLB bus or Visa bus. Some particular cars will have two of these or three of them. In reality and in practice I've seen stability issues with machines that had more than two. Um, so I've had a video card in one of these and a, an add-on controller card for the uh, hard drive and floppy drive but when it went ahead and started running the third card as if it were we started having some issues so most boards will implement two and generally you'll have a video card plugged into one of them and a hard drive controller card still be stuck into the ISO box anyway. Plus it's just an extension of what system you already have so if you have a 16-bit system it extends it up if you have an MCA system it will also just uh, extend it up. So and the same will be the same as an enhanced uh, EISA slot. So enhanced is a slot I showed you a long time ago on a 486 board so there's actually a link, a link. There's a video here on my page for it. If you have a 486 and you want to have a, a Visa slot on it, go ahead and get it. If you have a 486 and a PCI slot, you're better off with that because it'll just run a lot better. So you'll find that uh, people are eager to get the 486s with PCI slots, but realistically, let's be honest, if you've got a 486 and you want to use PCI, you're probably better off using a Pentium with PCI and then clocking it back. Go faster and then peel it back slower. Um, what would I choose? Would I go for the 486? Yeah, I go for the 486 over the 386 insofar as there's a lot more you can do with the 486 and you can do with the 386 and you can also slow down the 486 to 386 speeds so it kind of gives you a option to do that. So I just want to touch on the Visa bus because I've never touched on it before so I'm hoping that my information is correct and my memory hasn't gone soggy. I'm also hoping that you found this video interesting. So if you did, you know, please like the video. If you hated the video, please thumb down the video. But leave a comment below on the way you liked it or why you didn't like it. I do these videos so as I can remember and hopefully um, help you remember if you've forgotten yourself. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, please like and subscribe if you feel like it. And if you don't, I'm not going to lose sleep tonight over. See you again. Bye bye.